So let's take a minute to talk about an HTTP request in your browser. Now I'm on google.com, which is gonna enforce SSL. So you will see HTTPS is the protocol. We see colon slash slash and then our domain. Now if you open up in Chrome, the developer tools, you can do this in Safari and uh, Firefox and any browser as well. If we refresh the page and look at the network tab, we'll see all of the requests that are made when we visit this page. The very first one is a get request to google.com and we got a 200 response, which means it was a success. So if we click on this, we can see the details of this request. So with Google, we are on HTTPS, which the browser understands HTTP and HTTPS. Those are specific ports. So HTTP goes on port 80 by default and HTTPS, SSL, goes on port 443 by default. So when you give it a domain, you're going to get this converted to a remote address, which is 127.217.4.196. That's Google's IP address that we used to get this, uh, this web page. Then we got port 443 here because we were using HTTPS and we got a successful response. When you're in your browser, you can make multiple types of requests. There is a get request which says, hey, go give me a page that I would like to look for. There's post requests which say, here, we're gonna send data to Google. So when you log in, you're gonna make a post request to log in with your email and your password, for example. There are other requests that are like uh, put or a patch, which allow you to update things like change your email or your password. And that will work on an existing database record somewhere in Google's servers. And then there's also a delete request. So if you wanna delete your account, you can say, let's delete uh, this object. So uh, Google server gives us a response with a bunch of headers that include cookies. You can see those here as set cookie. And we have the other headers here for caching and uh, the content type and the time and those sorts of things. And we can see here the request headers that we sent over. We want to go to google.com. We wanna use HTTPS. We will accept an HTML response or XML or images and so on. Google reads all of these headers and then gives us a response back. So Google's response is an HTML document where they've really compressed a lot of JavaScript and things uh, very tightly in their response. So they can send that to people very, very quickly. So if we go to our Rails application and we open up the network tab here, we can refresh the page and we'll see the Rails request and response. So this is 127.001 and that is our request to our local Rails server. 127.001 means go talk to your own computer on port 3000. Um, and you also will see this as localhost. That's the same thing, and it will give you the same response there. Now, if we open this up, we'll see that we get the same sorts of things here. We have a response and a request, and you can see what all is defined there, and the response HTML um, as well. So we have two separate things in our request. We have the URL, well, three. We have the URL that we're looking for, and then we have our headers, which are cookies, they're cache control things, and so on. And then there are um, your body of the response, which is your HTML, your CSV, your XML, your image, whatever the server is responding with. So you want to keep this network tab open to monitor what's going on. But what's really nice is that if you go into the Rails logs, you'll see here the exact same stuff but from the server side of things. So in your browser, you can see what it is asking for. And then on the server, you can see how Rails is responding to that request. So here we got a get request to retrieve a page for the default route, which is the root, um, just the slash by itself. That is the root route. And Rails decided to process this with the Rails welcome controller um, and the index action and it's looking for an HTML response. So it gave us these two templates um, as HTML and returned that 
with a success 200 okay in one millisecond. So it was very fast and gave us that response very, very quickly. Before we dive into Rails, I wanna point out that your requests in your browser are very simple. They're actually just these messages sent back and forth to your server from your browser, and they're just text. And so the protocol is that you have your get, your URL that you want, and then the HTTP protocol, 1.1 in this example, and we're going to ask for example.com to give us their root route, which is just the slash. And so it's just text being sent from your browser to a server, nothing to it, it's very simple. And your server will do a little bit of work and then generate this response and send it back. And it's going to give you the same things but kind of in reverse. So it's going to say HTTP 1.1. You got a 200 okay response, so it was successful. Here are your headers. We're gonna tell you when you requested it, your content type, which tells the browser, hey, this is HTML, so you can render that out. The amount of content, so just so that your browser knows, we give you 155 bytes, so if you ever didn't receive all of that, you would be aware of it. Um, this is the last time it was modified, so 2003, very long time ago, and your browser can understand to use some of these other headers like the e tag and say, hey, go cache this response, and if you ever make this request again, you don't need to if we've got the same e tag. Um, we can cache that in your browser, so your browser can say, hey, let's load the version we have cached and then go check if there's a new one. Oh, there's not, we'll just leave it and we're done. So it can do things very fast like that. Then after the headers and the HTTP response type, it will just give you some HTML back for this example. So Wikipedia article on this covers all kinds of things like authentication and other stuff that HTTP does. But for our example, we're going to be doing something very simple and we wanna focus more on Rails. So HTTP is something you definitely want to understand at a high level because that is where all of your requests in Rails are generally going back and forth between your browser and your Rails app. So it's important to understand the protocol that they use to talk between each other. And Rails will abstract a lot of that out to make it easier for you, but if you don't understand what's happening under, underneath, then it can be very hard to debug problems. So that is a quick introduction to it. Definitely recommend reading up on it some more on your own. The MDN guides from Mozilla are phenomenal. And the Wikipedia page for HTTP is actually pretty good too. It covers quite a bit of stuff. So in the next video, we're going to talk about MVC or Model View Controller, which is how Rails organizes your application to respond to HTTP requests.